Hello YouTube and welcome to Dumpster Linux part 10 and in this part I'm going to show you the final installation routine. Why am I doing it this way now? Well, it's because previously what we were doing was installing Ubuntu which came with the Unity interface and Unity is a very Marmite interface. If you like it, good. If you don't, we're going to need to replace it with something. Now, previously we were replacing the desktop with the Lubuntu desktop and we were installing the GNOME panel on top of that to give us the top and bottom bars with all the, uh, the interfacing. But when you load another desktop there are a few odds and sods here and there that won't work very easily and uh, while someone who's experienced in Linux can easily get around that if you're not so experienced in it you might have a few problems. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping everything as tightly as I can. And what we're going to be doing is installing Ubuntu itself. Then we're going to be installing the GNOME shell. So we're going to install the GNOME shell straight on top of Unity. When we go to log on to the machine, that's when we tell the machine, look, don't use Unity, use the GNOME shell. That's where we tell it what we want it to use. Finally, we go into the step of removing the applications that we don't want, adding the applications that we do want, and then doing a bit of customization. Now, if, uh, if you're happy with Unity and you like it, you can go ahead and just skip out the um, installation of the GNOME shell and just don't ask for the GNOME shell when you log on. And you can pretty much follow the rest of it. Now, I've tried to make this as easy as I can for you. If you check out the hoo-ha bar and expand it, you'll find a load of code. Now, what you want to do with that code is copy it and paste it into a text file. Then, once you've got that text file, copy it to a USB stick. It's not overly large, and you, you can easily put it on, you know, one of those small USB sticks that you get from an expo. And uh, then you can use that on the machine to do the commands that we're going to do. You can just cut and paste into the terminal the commands that you want to run. We'll go through the whole thing. <sighs> so I've made it as easy as I can for you. And as you saw from part nine, all this can be done in about an hour. So once you've actually got the hang of this, it becomes a piece of cake. And it really does make looking after things a lot easier. There is one final step to making this a lot easier, but it'll be explained in bits and pieces through the next parts as I explain where the files are on the system because you'll probably be used to the C drive, the D drive and all the rest of it. It's not the same in Linux. All will be explained. But for now, what I'm going to do is jump in at part 3 because you've already seen in the previous videos how to install Ubuntu itself. Get the ISO file, burn it to a CD and run the installation program. Dead simple. You've also seen how to um, basically stick in the USB key, get the command from the text file and paste it into the terminal. So where previously you cut and pasted the sudo apt-get command to install the Lubuntu desktop, we're now going to be doing sudo apt-get install gnome shell. That's line two, but I'm already going to presume that you've done that because again it's been shown in the previous videos and it's line two in the hoo-ha bar here. So where we're going to jump in at is part three. We're going to assume that you've installed the GNOME shell, dead easy, and then we're going to re-log onto the machine and tell it which shell we want to use. Right, so here we are. We've installed Ubuntu and we've also installed the GNOME shell. So now we're at the logon screen and we need to tell Ubuntu what uh, desktop environment we want to use. And you'll notice this sort of a footprint symbol here. Once you press it, what you get is a list of the different desktop environments. Now if you haven't installed the GNOME shell, all you'll see is Ubuntu and Ubuntu 2D. But with the GNOME shell installed, you can see that we've got three more. GNOME, GNOME Classic, and GNOME Classic No Effects. Now if you're running something like a low power laptop, you might want to use the No Effects. Um, but we're going to use the full-blooded GNOME Classic. So we're going to select that one and log in. Now I'm not 100% sure of what you're seeing on this because the LCD on the video camera isn't showing me 100% of what you're seeing. 
So um, I'm taking it as read that you can see that we've got the uh, GNOME toolbars at top and bottom like we've seen before. Now, um, we also have our USB stick here. So we're gonna, just going to put that in the drive. Uh, in the drive, in the slot. And what will happen is once it's mounted, up pops the contents. And you'll see our text file here. So we just double click on that. And hey presto, <coughs> we have our text file. Right, uh, so we've installed Ubuntu, uh, we've done the GNOME shell, um, now we're going to remove the unwanted apps. Now, up in the Applications section, under the Accessories, you'll see the terminal. And that's what we want. And now we're just playing a game of cut and paste. Um, you'll also notice that the buttons here are actually on the left hand side. Um, as part of this, we're going to switch them to the right-hand side if you wish. You can miss this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to select and uh, copy the text for removing the unwanted apps. And in this window, we're just going to paste it and press the return key. It's going to ask us for our password because it's saying, look, you're doing some serious stuff here. Uh, I need to know that you are uh, who you say you are. So that's asking us for confirmation. Yes and we just remove it all. That's going to take a few moments. <coughs> yeah, da -da -da, da -da, da -da. I'm not speeding this up because it shouldn't take that long. <sighs> there, done. So now we know what to add in the new applications and again it's simply a case of highlight it, uh, right click copy, and what actually popped up there for a fraction was the update manager. Um, we're going to ignore it because we're still doing work on the system and it might have more stuff to update later. So again, we paste all that in, press the return key. Uh, are we sure we want to continue? Yes. Now you'll notice that it didn't ask us for our password that time uh, because we didn't close the terminal and we did it within a reasonable amount of time. So uh, Ubuntu made a conclusion that uh, well, um, they've already authenticated themselves, not much time has passed, and they haven't closed the window, so we're going to assume that they are who they say they are, and we're going to continue. Now, the download of this lot is going to take a bit of time. Um, at the minute, it's telling us 17 minutes. <laughs> um, who knows how long that's going to take? Um, because after it's downloaded, um, it's also going to have to install everything. It's now jumped to 19 minutes, 5 seconds. Um, obviously, we're dealing with uh, contention ratio here, <laughs> and let's face it: after installing the actual um, uh, the actual operating system itself, um, installing all the new applications is the next big step. Uh, it's now reduced to 15 minutes, 10 minutes, Aha, 10 minutes, nine seconds. So we're obviously dealing with some contention ratios here, and uh, somebody else is obviously hammering the broadband in the area. <laughs> Um, while that's actually doing that, we can do a few other bits and pieces. Uh, we can also go to the application's accessories and ask for another terminal. So while that's doing that, we can do a few more other things. Um, one is this one, uh, which you typically just want to copy and paste in. That sh ensures that any overlay uh, scroll bars are killed. Uh, don't worry about the technical aspects of that. You can just do it. It asks us for our password. Now the next one is buttons on the right, um, and you can do this um, if you want to. If you're happy with the buttons being on the left hand side of the window, great. If you want them on the right, um, then you're just going to need to cut and paste one of these in. Now I've got the two versions, one for 12.04 and one for 12.10. So simply copy and paste whichever one you want. So this is 12.04, um, so we're just going to paste that in, bink, done. And you can instantly see that the buttons have, van have uh, jumped over to the right hand side. Now one of the other things is if you've got a Bluetooth um, interface in, um, it's not easy to put the device name in. Um, <laughs> why? It's something that they're still working on. Um, but what you need to do is change the device name here for what you want to call it. Simply copy that line in then and paste it and then copy that line in and paste that because that will restart the Bluetooth service and your new name will take effect. 
Now there's another thing going on here, which is the screensaver. Now with the 12 point versions, the screensaver is being reworked. So the easiest way is to turn it off completely. Um, you will find a number of things, but the last thing you want to do is um, is be in the middle of uh, watching a video and uh, hey presto, your the screen just goes blank after a few minutes. So we're going to copy and paste that one in. Uh, there's a couple of things, just like um, all the other operating systems, you've got a few things. You've got the screen saver application and also you've got the power management that's going on. Um, and because we've put the GNOME desktop environment on top of Unity, um, there's a bit of a clash happening. So what we do is we tell the GNOME desktop screensaver, look, um, don't, <laughs> just don't run. Um, idle activation, turn it off. So that'll kill that. Um, after that, we have a 32-bit DVD playback. And just copy and paste these in one by one. This will only work if you're running the 32-bit version, and it should run with either 12.04 or 12.10. This will typically um, need us to wait until this finishes, <laughs> because it needs um, that. The top line, to be honest, um, will probably fail, because they've already installed it. If you tick the checkbox at the start when you installed to include all the third-party things, which you should have done, hopefully, um, it'll already be in there. So you should just be able to paste in the second line, then paste in um, the third line, and hey presto, that will install all the DVD playback stuff for you. And as you can see, it's all done. So um, we're still installing the main applications, uh, six minutes, 35 seconds, just to do the downloads. So we're gonna just run through this again. Um, what we're actually also gonna do is this something um, that I've installed. As part of the main, oh, it's not in yet. <laughs> the Compiz Configs Settings Manager, and you'll find that to be quite handy, a handy little piece of kit. Um, I'm gonna have to show you that after it's all done. So I've installed Ubuntu, um, then you've installed uh, the GNOME shell. Then we logged in and uh, told it that we wanted to use the GNOME uh, desktop environment. We then removed the unwanted applications and added in some new applications. And that's what's currently in process. We just did a little technical cop cut and paste to ensure the overlay scroll bars were killed. Then uh, we chose whether or not we wanted our buttons on the right hand side and um, it was up to us on that one. Whether you, whether you downloaded the LTS 12.04 or whether you downloaded the latest, which is 12.10. It's just a case of choosing which one, cutting and pasting it in. Then if you happen to have Bluetooth installed, um, it was a case of programming it with the device name that you wanted to show up on and restarting Bluetooth so that that actually took effect. We then um, disabled the screensaver because of the current work that's ongoing with the screensaver side of the system. We also, because we're running uh, the 32-bit version here, we installed the DVD playback side of things. Uh, the top of it, uh, libdvdcss2, uh, was already installed because we put the tick in when we installed Ubuntu at the start to install all the third-party stuff. So we didn't actually have to do that. All we had to do was the second line to change the directory and the third line which actually installed the CSS. And that was it. There's a few other couple of, there's a few other applications uh, which we can use here, um, which is Handbrake, ClipGrab, KDN Live, um, Ubuntu One. We're going to go through all this. Um, but for now, um, there's not much that can be done other than to close that window, close that window, um, close this one, <laughs> and wait for this to finish. Because once that's finished, uh, we're probably just going to play it on the safe side, reboot again, uh, we shouldn't need to, it's just playing it safe. And then we're going to come back and pick up where we left off. Four minutes, four seconds to download, and then it's going to take a few more minutes to install everything. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Here we are again, all that lot has been installed and we're back to the logon screen. You'll note that if I go for the little uh, footprint there, we're still on GNOME Classic. It's remembered what we set. So we're going to go uh, and log in again. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do here is uh, something that will help me 
show you a few bits and pieces. Um, the hard drive is actually going bananas because of the new installations and that should settle down. Um, you might want to use this yourself. Uh, part of the installation was the uh, Compiz managers. I mean, don't worry too much about that. But what you want to do is go up to Applications and down to System Tools. Under System Tools you have Preferences and then you have the Compiz Configs Settings Manager. A bit of a mouthful. But what's actually driving the desktop uh, for GNOME is Compiz. And um, we can change a few settings here. Uh, this is a warning that it's an advanced tool used with caution. I'm going to say no, don't show me the warning next time. And what you're going to be after on the left hand side is going to be the accessibility. Oh, we've actually got a few more bits and pieces in here. Um, ah, I wonder why. <laughs> Among those are the enhanced zoom desktop. Now we're going to click on the enhanced zoom desktop and that's going to come up with a few options. I'm actually going to zoom you in on this so you can see it a bit better. Uh, that's out, that's in. Uh, I'll move the window and touch. You'll notice that we have uh, at the top here zoom in by mouse and zoom out by mouse. And you'll notice on the right hand side that they're disabled. Now we're actually going to enable them. So we're going to click on zoom in disabled and we're going to select enabled. Now um, obviously this is a bit... Uh, Ah, something's gone a bit awry there. I think it's because I haven't loaded the um, the uh, the updates yet. But we're going to ask for the super key. Ah, there it comes. We're going to ask for the super key, and we're going to ask for button 4. And we're going to OK that. For the zoom out, we're going to click on the disabled. We're going to enable it. We're going to ask for super, and we're going to ask for button 5. And we're going to OK that. And that's that. What I'm now going to do is zoom the camera out. Bum, 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 bum. But um, if you uh, if you notice on your keyboard, you have um, a key that looks like a Windows key. It's called the Windows key on Windows, probably. Uh, but under Linux, it's known as the Super key. It's normally between the Control and the Alt on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that Super key down. While I'm holding that down, I'm actually going to use the scroll uh, on the mouse. And as you can see, I can now scroll in. And I can also zoom out. <laughs> Simply by holding uh, the zoom down. So if I zoom in on applications, you'll see that I can actually show you better what I'm selecting. Um, without having to zoom... <laughs> without having to zoom all this in and out. And you'll notice that it was under System Tools. Um, it was then under Preferences, and it was that one, Compiz Config Settings Manager. I'm just going to click away from that and show you that it was in, uh, if I just go back here, um, it was under the Accessibility, and it was the Enhanced Zoom Desktop, which should be ticked anyway. Um, it should be ticked as default, but when you go into it, you'll notice um, that everything is pretty much disabled. So uh, you just have to change the top one to super button 4 and the, the third one to super button 5 and then this feature should work for you. I'm just going to zoom back out and uh, kill that one. <coughs> right, uh, we're going to do a bit of zooming and one of the things is places and you'll notice that uh, under places is a number of different things. You have, as you can see, uh, the home folder which is where all the um, the root of all the files are stored, sort of like the My Documents. Um, there are subsections including the Desktop, and the Documents folder, the Music folder, Pictures, Videos and Downloads. So as you can see, there are folders existing already for all the major things you want to do. You've also got the root of the computer itself, and you have any mounted media that shows under here. So if you've mounted a CD-ROM or a USB stick, as you can see the USB stick here, that's where it will show, and you can simply go to that um, there's also a network and hey presto you're looking at what's there so here's our list we're just going to double tick on that and here you can see uh, what we did um, it's all nice in there nice and in there how do I get in there there we go and that's pretty much everything that you've got in your text file um, 
the 32-bit playback went in, we did the screensaver disable, we did the Bluetooth name, we did the buttons on the right, and uh, we did the scroll bar kill, we've done everything down to there. The next thing is to actually install a few other applications, uh, one of which is Handbrake, if you um, have a DVD collection that you want to take on the road, and the manufacturers don't give you an easy option. Um, Clip Grab, if you want to download your YouTube videos. Um, KDN Live, which is video editing software. And we have Ubuntu One. Now we're going to come back to these at a later date. Um, but uh, for now, we're going to have a look at the software we've installed because it's quite a bit. Um, among uh, the things that we've installed are, um, we took out Chromium Browser. Now Ubuntu has links with uh, Google and Chromium comes as standard. I took that out. Um, also Thunderbird for email took that out. Uh, Evolution for email and organizing took that out. Uh, transmission, um, Transmission Common took that out, took out F-Spot, um, took out the overlay scroll bar and we just needed to make sure and we also made sure that K-Mail was out uh, as well. Now we'll come to things like these, like Thunderbird and K-Mail, when we start talking email and also evolution. What we added, if you do prefer Chromium over Firefox, then you can leave Chromium in. Uh, just take it out of this command, just select from the sudo to the end of Thunderbird, and paste that in, and Chromium browser will be left in. Um, we added in a load of applications, among them Firefox for web browsing, Digicam um, for viewing images, a GIMP and GIMP UF RAW and UF RAW for actually editing images from, from cameras uh, including RAW files. Um, we installed some extras for GIMP, um, a few other things, GNU Cache for cache management, uh, VLC for video viewing, um, FileZilla for um, actually being able to um, Upload files to FTP if you use it. Uh, Gparted for which is basically partitioning editing. If you uh, you should find that useful for reformatting areas. Uh, Blender 3D animation very handy if you do that sort of thing. Um, FFmpeg for file conversions. Um, other bits and pieces. GNOME also mixer easier to control your sound. Sound converter which will convert f sound files between different formats. So if you're like me and you prefer the OG format, you can take all your MP3s and convert them to OG. Uh, very easy. Uh, KTorrent. We're using KTorrent as opposed to transmission for getting hold of torrent feeds. Now, some people balk at the uh, mention of the word torrent feeds because they uh, automatically link it with illegal activities. But torrents are very useful and we'll talk about that later. Um, sound juicer for taking audio off your CD uh, discs. Um, is becoming very, um, you know, new cars and the rest of it are coming with uh, SD card readers. So rather than having your CD collection in, in your car, where it will uh, very easily succumb to temperatures and damage, you can just take it off to uh, an SD card and put the SD card in the machine. Also saves power because you're not using a laser to read, uh, to read the music. Um, a few other things, um, clam for your antivirus and uh, fresh clam to update it. Um, Subversion, if you use uh, Subversion, AVI, DMAX, Ubuntu One, and we're installing things like the Ubuntu One client here. Um, Ubuntu One will cover in another, uh, in its own section. LibreOffice, um, which is the office utility, um, you know, Word, Excel, that sort of thing, for the, um, uh, for the home use. Um, XChat, if you do XChatting, um, which is the old-fashioned way of doing things. Uh, Gconf Editor. Uh, GNOME panel uh, comes in as part of that. Um, it's already installed. Um, I've left it in there in case you decide to continue to go via the Lubuntu desktop. Um, so you'll automatically have the GNOME panel when you do that. Clause Mail. Um, I'm using Clause Mail instead of some of the others like Thunderbird Evolution and Kmail and we'll discuss that when we come to uh, discussing email itself. SIFS Utils is going in, which will enable um, sharing, file sharing over different uh, net, uh, over your home network. Uh, the Synaptic Package Manager. Now I've got I've got a particular soft spot for Synaptic. Um, it works basically. <laughs> 
Um, we've got hard, in hard info and GTK Perf. Now these are actually performance management uh, performance benchmarking systems. Sorry to use the right word, and uh, you can use those to benchmark uh, your dumpster Linux machine to see just how well it's going to perform for you. And we also have the Compiz Config Settings Manager. What a mouthful! Which is what we've just installed to enable us to do this zooming. So that's about it. We've actually installed a shared load of applications and despite a few more in this list uh, which we're going to install at a later date um, video, uh, DVD ripping, uh, YouTube video grabbing, uh, video editing which is quite an important one I believe uh, for me and the Ubuntu One client um, we've pretty much got a, a nicely working system here um, I'm just going to zoom out, hit that um, we're going to put that away to one side for a bit and let's see, we're at 11 minutes with the other one of 10 minutes, we're coming up to close on half an hour. So that's it, we've now got uh, a system here with all the add-ons. Um, can I zoom in on that? I've got to zoom in before I actually do it. Uh, yep. Um, here we go. Uh, we've got all the, in uh, all the bits here. Oh, printers by the way, those will uh, go for themselves. You've got um, the logon ID there, you've got uh, pretty much everything, calendar, uh, mute, all your network connections, all your um, notifications and your <laughs> and your chatting stuff is all there. Um, and yeah, and, and we're nicely integrated. So, um, we have the desktop switcher down at the bottom right, and uh, just going to zoom in on that. And you can see um, we're currently on workspace one and you can use the control and alt key as before to switch the workspaces. And there we go. So everything's there pretty much and uh, everything's <laughs> available. The next video we're going to have a look at the office applications and we're going to talk a bit about compatibility and uh, give you a rundown of what they can do and what you've got available. Ah, while we're here we're going to talk about the menu editing. Um, let's zoom in a bit here. By right clicking on applications you get edit menus and with edit menus you can actually edit the menu system that's going on which is quite cool. Um, you get to look in each of the sections and you can either hide or unhide various bits. And I think under the science section, um, where is it? Programming? Ugh, other? <laughs> you can see there's actually all this stuff here and because there's no ticks by the side of it, they're not showing up on the network. Uh, they're not showing up on the menu system, but they're in there. And you can have a look through the menu system, see what applications are there and uh, go for that. Ah, there it is, LibreOffice Math. Uh, we're going to be coming to the LibreOffice system and I'm just going to put a tick uh, by the side of the math because I want math to show as well. Anything in italics is in italics because it's not showing. Um, a subsection like other or science, uh, as you can see here, are in italics because there's no items within them that it can show. And you've got on the right hand side, you can start yourself a new menu, add a new item, put a new separator in, or move items up or down the menu selection. So you've actually got some very powerful control here over what appears in the menu uh, when you drop it down. Uh, you can create your own sections, drag and drop them between different areas, like I could just drag math into other if I wished. Boom, there it goes. And other is now come out of italics because math is in there and it's ticked we'll move it back to Office. And as you can see, uh, with the LibreOffice applications, you've pretty much everything. You've got uh, Base, which is a database utility, Calc for your spreadsheets, Draw, um, Impress, which is the version of sort of PowerPoint sort of thing. Um, you have Math, oh, I've now got two copies of Math, it's copied it rather than doing that. So we'll just delete one of those. Um, and Writer, which is your word processing uh, side of things. You'll also notice among the other things that we've already got a document viewer and we've also got ocular and PDF chain. So as part of the standard installation, this is already equipped to read PDF documents. So you haven't got to go and uh, run the gauntlet of getting a free, free Adobe PDF reader or things like that. It's amazing what's actually installed in here as a matter of course. <laughs> um, yeah, so you've, you've got some very powerful uh, options here. 
and the LibreOffice system is a complete system and it's not limited to Windows uh, sorry it's not limited to Linux you can get it on Windows and the rest of it is as well I mean my personal viewpoint is why bother paying Microsoft 70 to 80 pounds for a stu cut down student version when you actually have a full system here uh, ready for you to use so I'll see you in the next part uh, when we're going to take a look at LibreOffice catch you in the next video YouTube bye